Uh, it's a fantastic performer. Uh, very great music. It's very Oklahoma styled, in my opinion. Very Oklahoma styled music. Uh, awesome, awesome to listen to, man. Um, so, so let's get it. Let's get it rolling. Who are you? I'm Chuck Lee Cooley, singer, songwriter, guitarist, uh, among many other things. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. So, um, you about how many here on the Tulsa live stream? Five or six times, at least five or six yeah. times. Yeah. And uh, what what got you to come here in the first place? Uh, a friend of mine, I saw, I saw that he was on it, and we were getting ready to head to Nashville and, uh, and move there, and I, I really wanted to kind of tell my little bit of a story uh, on here, uh, and you, you all were acceptable, and you, you brought me on, <laughs> and I've grown every time I've been on here, because like, it, it's like, uh, it's weird playing without an audience, and uh, so you, you can relax a lot more here, and, 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 and kick back, and... and it's not in such a hurry like being at a show is, you know. I mean, so yeah, I've grown a lot since. Yeah. Obviously, you're very well, uh, <laughs> very well off here in the music world. So, um, so if you could give uh, uh, advice to um, an up and coming musician that's, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little nervous to get out on the stage, what kind of advice would you give a newer uh, person like that? I'd say probably uh, if you were looking at yourself ten years from now, and. Uh, you look back and you're worried about the way you, you, you looked or the, the way your hair was or uh, then you, you might want to give all you got right now give everything you got man bring it all because uh, uh, it's the only uh, this might be your only chance to do it and if it is you want to give all so you, when you are looking back 10 years from now you're not gonna go man I could have done better you, you're gonna go no I gave all so I mean Get out there and just do it. You know what I mean? I mean, either they're gonna like you or they're not. You know, and I've had both had them <laughs> hating me and loving me. So I mean, uh, I've, been, I've been called off the stage in the middle of a show. You know, so <laughs> the wrong act. <laughs> <laughs> You could explain to someone how uh, coming out here and performing has helped you, other than you know just the you know weekly practice, if you will. Uh, what what would you say you've benefited from the Tulsa live stream? Well, uh, there's a lot of people that can't come to my shows, and so uh, uh, they're disabled, and, or they they just don't get out, or this uh, this this virus has made people homebodies, and so uh, and it's made them lazy. <laughs> And they've forgotten how fun it can be getting out. So this is a place where, like my dad, he, he doesn't get out. He lives in Georgia. And, he, and my dad's never ever seen me but one time live. And so uh, this is the way he gets to see me every show. And I, I, that's what the thing about it I love is like all the people, my mother, all these people that live far away, they get to see me this way. And, and I mean, it's a great, like I said, it's a great platform. God, so many different reasons, man. Yeah, so yeah. But, uh, and I've grown, that's, that's my... My uh, reputation has grown from that because people see consistency. Yeah. And uh, so um, we've kind of uh, discussed a little bit about um, just your experience here on the Tulsa live stream. But what about um, what about your experiences before coming to the show? I heard you had a band started around maybe 1994. Yeah, um, what yeah. what was it called? Berserker. Okay.
off the battle we ride With our weapons and men pressed to the sky Set the Nova and dead on the ground With the wolf up a foot and a victory shout So from head to foot With the enemy's blood The iceberg is on a kid Covering his eyes There's a sword in his head The iceberg is on a kid oh. Okay, and so like, what what was that all about? How did how how does that translate from then into where you are now here uh, on the show? For for one, man, Berserker, uh, you know, there's so many people that have, that assume they knew what we were about, and and or what, uh, us as a whole band, all of us in the band had different different beliefs in the way we lived, or the way we thought. Um, we were signed by a white power label, yeah, and uh, for mostly skinhead bands. Uh, we got signed because of the band, the, the two of the guys that were in the band before me. They had played in a band, one of the most notorious white racist bands, Midtown Boot Boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're known worldwide and uh, for their crazy songs, right. shocking songs. Right. And, and, and the thing about people, the way people need to know is that they sing music not much different than Cannibal Corpse singing about, you know, eating dead flesh and, right. and, and all these bands out there, Marilyn Manson. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, they got, you know, guy gets away with people, hundreds of people spitting on him in a show, you know, right. and gets away with that. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's but if somebody speaks something on their, their actual beliefs or something, uh, uh, then everybody gets a little, you know, hasty and crazy. Yeah. And to me, uh, these songs that we sang on the album that I was on, Voice of Our Ancestors, mm -hmm. is all historical uh, songs. They were all songs based on actual things that had happened, except for one, a song called Southern Vision, where it says that well, this is based, the song's based, we have a Southern Vision, is based on lessons learned from the past. Right. Which is, if they put it together, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll see. Uh, were we racist? No, I, I'm not. Yeah. Never been? Don't care to be. Right. Now, I've done some things that are shocking. Right. And I'm all about shock factor. <laughs> Uh, you go to my shows, you'll, you'll see me pull out a big beer barrel, beer bong and drink, you know, and it's a skull. Yeah. You know, and I do beer bongs, you know, out of a skull, you know. So, I mean, I, mean, uh, uh, I say I've been saying things that are shocking and provocative or, you know, out of line sometimes because that's me. Yeah. Uh, it's only just to pull your strings, man, you know, right. pull your chain. Yeah. Um, well, it's entertainment, you know, but you're anybody, in the entertainment industry. Yeah, that's, that's exactly that's right, man. Just like pro wrestling, they do some crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. They're athletes, yeah. man. And, and, they yeah. are athletes. Yeah, they're, they're athletes, but they do, <laughs> entertainment-wise, they do some yeah. crazy stuff that's just out of line right. sometimes. But they still do it, and they get away. Uh, so these songs were just based on, none of them were really pointed at anybody except for yeah. the facts of the songs. If there's anything, you know, there was a song called Justice. It had the word mm, in it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and it told you what we were describing as right. this kind of person. Um, it wasn't pointing at anybody or any color or anything. Uh, you can take it for whatever it was, but it was white music for white people. Right. And blacks do it. Mexicans do it. I can't understand any Mexican music. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I can't. I don't speak Mexican. So that's for them. Right, right. So we were, and, you know, I don't think it's anybody's right to tell anybody they can't listen to whatever they want to listen to. Uh, I mean, he, neither, I don't point the finger and blame them for having theirs. Right. You know, I, I've never seen slave owners or slaves in my lifetime. Let alone be a neo-Nazi and, and believe in something that was been gone longer right. than I've been alive. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't believe in any of that kind of crap. I, I sing a song about Rommel the Desert Fox because he was a great desert tank, you know, right. uh, fighter. He never was defeated, except by his leader who killed him. Yeah. Killer. Okay. So, so then, and then, I, you know, the, the songs are in the Deutschland was about the Germans, the, those innocent Germans that died. Yeah. And bam, and one big bad bomb gone, all those lives. Yeah. So I sing about Deutschland. I'm from, I mean, I'm, I'm German, so I, I have the right to do that. Yeah. You know, so uh, that that's, uh, the so the band is the, the, has going been going for 26 years. We only did five shows, man, and wow. and, and the the albums are still selling, and it's they sell to people that aren't racist or they're from all different countries around the yeah. world, and I get mail from all of them all the time, and, and so. So, and I'm the only one that speaks for the band, so I, I've chose to do that. And I've had some people want to lose me as friends because of the nature of the music or whatever. Man, go listen to the album, and, and you tell me if it, it, it should offend you. Yeah. If it does, then then you're a drug dealer, or you're or you steal from your own kind. Whatever. It's that's what the songs are. You know, they just point fingers at people that, yeah. that are bad people. 
You know, yeah. and, and we look at you know the history of white people. We are very violent. Yeah. And we've been known <laughs> very. We are and known and, for and that. And that's that's out of, out of line. But for a young guy coming out of prison, me at 25, very bitter, very angry, yeah. and a record contract being slammed in front of me and saying, this is where you get to go if you got this. I, I'm going to jump on that. Yeah. That's a lot of, I that's mean, that's a stepping stone to, yep. to what I really want to do, which is what I've done for the last 26 years, yeah. Chuck Hilly Music. I have nothing, which has nothing to do with any of that. Right. It has to do with my drug abuse, which I've made a, made a name on. Yeah. which is crazy uh, a name on my life or my music is out of my drug abuse because yeah. it relates to so many people that have done drugs which is far more greater than what we we all know right uh, the people that are addicted to drugs yeah. so i mean um since we're yeah, yeah how, we're is, that how is that uh, really like just affected i don't know just well it, it, it's about like Nick, music life it's like nikki six said uh it's a long <laughs> long road yeah. of of being clean, being not clean, being clean, being not clean. And then you can lie about it, which I came out and told the truth when I went back to drugs after being clean for so long. And it let a lot of people down. I lost a lot of friends. But I'm here to tell you, man, there's a, there's a reason for everything, man. And, and, and that's what the new music's about. It's is about this dreams that I had that told the story that I had. I forgot where I came from. Yeah. And, and, and when you find happiness for the first time in your life... Uh, a whole new set of blinders come on and you um uh you uh, wash away 37 years yeah. of pain but with all this happiness but but these there's new blinders there's new new problems that come occur yeah. and mine were uh, I, I i sing these songs that were wrote about me but I, I made them sound like they were for other people which well, they were like that but somewhere in the mix of it all i forgot that they were about me yeah because they were my songs that were my story Right. I was, you know, I'd sing them for other people. I said they were for, like for other people, so that I could find uh, others like me. Yeah. And I, and I did. Yeah. And it was great. <laughs> and we built a scene here in Tulsa for a long time, and it, for eight or nine years, it was killing it. We were, yeah. we were, and then I walked away, and that kind of it, it let a lot of people down, and and it, and it brought the haters galore yeah. when I said I went back to drugs. If I was advise anybody about ever coming out honest. Be honest to who, those that matter. Yeah. That's what I would say. Be honest to those that matter because you don't need to come out publicly and live your life in a glass box like I did. So everybody could see I had to, I had to be honest. I had to, oh, if you're going to see me rise, then you can see me fall. Yeah. You know? And, and you got you better get, be able to take the hits. Yeah. If you're going to do drugs, that's all i got to say is you, if you're going to go and lose yourself, you better be able to find yourself. Yeah. You know? And, and it, it's a long, hard road. And, yeah. uh, and but I'm not going to knock anybody that does them or, or anything because man, it's their own battles, their own journey, yeah. and and life's hell. <laughs> yeah. gotta, no matter what you you're gotta, doing, you, you know? build your armor somehow. Yeah. You know, uh, Some people need that firsthand experience in order yeah. to, to press forward. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, uh, how has music affected you know your family life? Because I'm so hell bent on this dream, and, and playing music my whole life, uh, it's it's affected my, my children. It's affected, uh, you know, the EXO ladies. And it separated us after, after, you know, I've had three families and five children. And they're all five beautiful. They're all music, mostly musicians. My three boys are. One's a tattoo artist. Uh, my daughters are writers and photographers. Everything that I do uh, out here in the world, that what I've been doing, is they all do. And, they, and they've learned from my mistakes. You know, my son, he has, he has kids now. And... He's, he's like, why couldn't you just be there for us, you know? And I'm like, well, it didn't work out between your, me and your mom like that, you know what I mean? Uh, but it was, uh, one thing I always did, man, is uh, and I, I suggest everyone that has children, every single day, as many times as you can, tell them you love them. You know, because uh, uh, one day you might not be there, and they're going to wonder why you're not there, and then they're going to wonder if you love them. But in the moment that they wonder that they, they, whether you love them, they know. Yeah. Cause you told them every yeah, memory, single day. Yeah. They every single day they knew that you. And that's luckily I did that. And when I, I got to see my children after a long spell of not being able to see them, I asked them, you know, you know, I love, Dad, you, you know, we don't we don't need to forgive you. We know we, we know that you loved us because you told us every day. And they, I get to hear all of them say that. So that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, otherwise, they have the same dreams, and they're, yeah. they'll see how hard it is to make dreams and family work. Yeah. It's a really hard somewhere there's got to be a sacrifice and, and right. i can't stop doing this I, I mean i've tried over and over and over and I, 
I've tried to run away, tried to leave, and Tulsa won't let go of you. It's like yeah. the, uh, you're in the eye of the twister. Yeah. You know, lets you go only so far out and before, before it brings you back down right here, but you're still staying here. Yeah. So, I, I can still remember the first time you came here. You were like, hey, man, this is my last opportunity here in Tulsa. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm like, oh, when are you leaving? You're like, Friday. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we got an opening Thursday. Let's make this happen. And then, and, and that's where the family thing came in. Is my children didn't like that. Yeah, that you were going to leave. Yeah, and I, I had six grandchildren. I, I, some of them I didn't even know about because wow. I'd been away from my children for a while. And they, they got their own lives, their own families, yeah, all yeah. of them, and they're living there. You know, they don't need me there and, unless they do, and then I'll be there. And painting and art and tattooing and all of those are another part of my life. Yeah. And, and that's what I do is create, 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 create. Or try. <laughs> right. So to right. be as original as possible because it's, how can you do something that seems like it's already right. been done? Right. There's you thought you got people to, on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right when you get, <laughs> right when you think you got a cool song title, you go, you go Google it and it's like 20, yeah. you know, what the hell? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the song, the, the, the songs are about my life over the last 10 years. Me stepping back into the darkness. And what I found there, and uh, well, it took me a minute to figure out why I was I had to go back there. I felt like, God, why, you, why did I do this again? Yeah. Because I forgot where I come from. And not, not only that, there was a reason why. And, yeah. and I met all these incredible people, musicians and artists, that uh, I happened to document on video yeah. and brought them out. And some of them would never, ever played their first shows or ever even played a show right. if I hadn't come into their life or them come into mine. Yeah. And, um, I found them and brought them out to the stage. So, Yeo was one of the guys from Detroit. He's a great rapper. Um, uh, there's Becca and Halo and, and all these great people. But what's sad is I have this documentary coming out. It's called Look at What I Found in the Dark. And and it's about them. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because the, most of them have, were homeless okay. people. And I was fine. And, and, and out of the nine, six of them are dead now. Wow. And uh, I want to share their memory, what I get to share with them. Well, and so uh, I made this documentary about my fall into darkness and how I found these people mm -hmm. and how, or how they found me and how I got to bring them to the stage. Yeah. And become an unbeliever. And uh, I mean, if you don't, me and my wife were out on the road for like six months. And most of the people that we met were out there, none of them, most of them didn't believe in God. Yeah. And I was like, what, 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 what is it do you believe in? And they said, I, I believe in me. I, I can do what I want. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, that's cool, but so if they're, you know, my point is, is, <laughs> is uh, I believe, and there's something out there, and, and, and either you pick the good side or the the dark side. Yeah. And uh, I get to walk bouncing back and forth in between both, and but I fight for the light, <laughs> and, yeah. and I always will. And I believe everything's gonna be all right. Right now, everything is all right. Yeah. I get to say that now. For 37 years, I said everything's gonna be all right, and the best is yet to come. And then we're like, when is that gonna happen? Yeah. Well, I get to live it every day now. Yeah. I don't fight with too many demons. I don't fight with too many struggles. I, I, if I am, it's my friends. They're demons. Yeah. <laughs> we're boxing. Yeah. <laughs> but I love everyone, and and uh, there's nobody I. I mean, that I, I choose over you know others unless you, you yeah. do me wrong or you talk shit you know yeah you, you gotta you gotta you gotta roll with that man and what, what the, you know the outcome of that yeah uh all i know is that uh i don't i haven't done nobody wrong and i'm and i'm, I'm gonna play music and do this till the day i die yeah and as long as Tulsa, Tulsa live streams here i'm gonna be here all right i'm a part of this family well, we love it we love you being here and one thing that i've noticed uh, just just you know it's kind of a third party here i don't really consider myself personally part of the music realm um, simply because I don't perform but I know that's kind of off subject but from what I can tell uh, any time that you've actually performed here on the show there's been at least two of the three other performers yeah. that know of you heard of you heard from you or, yeah. or something and it's just it's really cool to see how many connections you have personally made um, and just like everybody talks highly of you i've oh, never heard a, i've never heard a bad comment come out of wow. anybody <laughs> towards you that's good it's always <laughs> just and it not like high praises but they're they're uh, um they're well speaking yeah. of you you know it's not i thought we try, try to keep it real <laughs> yeah it's i yeah. think that's so that's like that's what life is you know life is about you know building relationships with people or we wouldn't be you know social creatures yeah, yeah, so yeah. like we we exist in some small way to interact with other people and so without without what you're doing you know some of the musicians may have never even come to me or to the program in the first place yeah and so i just i feel so honored that i get to you know just see 
life happening and then get to kind of document people's reaction yeah, to life yeah. happening. And so I, yeah. I'm just so grateful to you and to all the musicians. Eventually, too. I mean, yeah. The show is great. I mean, just your capabilities and you know the things you've got going on and luckily yeah. p people have made donations yeah and i was and, gonna say that's that's only thanks to the people who have decided to uh, generously help this thing this thing I, I advise anybody that's out there watching man to help it's also live stream you know go on there and find out where you need to donate and, and just do it because it, they're they're helping so many people. Go in there and look at how many musicians. I didn't know there was that many yeah. around here. We're up I mean, to, what, 125, I think? Yeah. I think 126 named uh, participants, but wow. I think we've got like 215 or so actual musicians that have come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole bands. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, hopefully I'll have a whole band on here one day. So, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, when we get some space, I think that's when we're going to actually be able to open the realm up. I'm... I'm still a little leery to bring yeah. know, bigger bands in here. It's just there's not enough room, and I I would really enjoy expanding <laughs> and just giving it a better uh, experience for the larger groups. And I think uh, that's you know that's just another step for us to move forward. So, like I said, everything's gonna be all right. Yeah. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time and having this interview with us. I, I appreciate you taking the time to allow this to happen, man. Because <laughs> yeah. I really a lot of these things are people need to know, and and yeah. and, and it's. Uh, I'm not a liar, and I don't like to lie. I don't like to, I mean, even think about it because yeah. it's just such a waste of time. Yeah. I, especially when you have to explain yourself later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you know they know you know. You, you know yeah. Everybody knows that the lie is happening. <laughs> right. Yeah, but everybody just ignores it and goes on. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's sad that half our world and most of the people on it are liars. Yeah. I mean, and they're, it's an addiction. Why don't they have Liars Anonymous? Right. I mean, I think that's a lot more important than fucking everything else. Yeah. You know, well. that's, that's, that would clear up a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, I really appreciate you, Chuck. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. 